Welcome to the European Parliamentary Research Service Podcasts. In this podcast, we'll talk about floating cities as a possible answer to the increasing threat of flooding facing many coastal cities. Ready to dive into the future? Two hundred and fifty million people now live on land below annual flood levels, and with global sea levels predicted to rise due to climate change and melting glaciers, this number may shoot up to six hundred and thirty by the end of the century. With the world sinking, coastal cities are looking for ways to cope with the growing threat of flooding. Shanghai, for instance, has built a gigantic dam system to protect the city, and Indonesia has made an even more drastic move to relocate its capital to an entirely new city being built on the island of Borneo. But what if we could build cities not to resist rising water, but to float on it? What would the long-term consequences be for societies, economies, and the environment? And could spreading out across the water be a solution to the housing shortages and social problems that exist in many of the world's cramped, rapidly growing cities? Well, the concept of living on water is certainly not a new one. Large parts of Singapore or the Netherlands are already built on reclaimed land, and Amsterdam is going one step further and experimenting with totally floating houses. Koen Altos from Dutch architectural firm Water Studio is convinced this is the future. The Netherlands is an artificial country. For the last centuries, we've been building dikes, levees to keep water out, and now I think there's a change to towards living with water. So floating houses, floating neighborhoods, and not only in the Netherlands, we also build floating theater in in France or buildings in uh, on water in Panama, or even a floating city in the Maldives. So it's really. The future for our cities, growing of water. These are built on small modules of individual buildings connected with plug-in systems and anchored in the seabed. Energy, sweet water, and internet are all provided via a land plug-in. A floating system would allow constructions to adapt to waves, tides, and even storms, including hurricanes. And the flexibility offered by the modular structures, which can be combined and recombined again to fit in new sports stadiums, schools, or parks, would allow cities to adapt to new demands. And just think of their potential for tourism. I would certainly want to see it with my own eyes. But building truly floating cities would force us to rethink urban planning at different levels. Here's Luisa Antunch from the European Parliamentary Research Service. We would need to find new ways to meet the water and energy needs of citizens. We would need to develop sustainable housing, public infrastructure and transport, waste treatment. Basically, almost every aspect of urban living would need to be rethought. And then we also have the impact on the marine ecosystems from the building and the maintaining of those cities. And then we also have the economic costs. It would be expensive to both build and maintain such as cities. And beyond sustainability and economic considerations, we'd also need to think about their impact on international relations and law, as cities on water could change international sea borders and open new legal challenges. So, could they be part of the solution, or will they just create new problems? Well, the answer is we still don't know. What we do know is that the EU's experience in promoting sustainable urban development already addresses many aspects related to cities on water, such as the circular economy, energy transition, housing, and sustainable land use. Many of these new cities' needs, like the efficient use of solar and water power systems, effective energy storage systems, and zero pollution policies, are also reflected in the European Green Deal. So, what more could the EU do in preparation for the future? One thing it could do is to integrate the ideas and policies developed around today's smart cities, many of which are coastal, to future living models, as they share many of the risks and opportunities. But there's also a lot of legal work to be done in advance if we want floating cities to be a viable and accessible option in the future. Which means rethinking concepts like ownership, mortgage, and financial classification laws, even jurisdiction—you name it. What's clear is that with its industrial, scientific, and diplomatic clout, the EU is positioned to take a leading role in this debate. Want to know more? 
Check out Louisa Antunch and Tobias Hoffman's full policy brief on the EPRS website or in our app. This is a European Parliamentary Research Service podcast. Thanks for listening.